Good evening. Thank you for joining us for another virtual town hall. Today is Wednesday, November 18th. Um, we have a lot to talk uh, through tonight, so I'm going to try to get through all my announcements. Uh, as of today, in the cases in Ohio, we are at 312,443 cases. Uh, here in the county, we are 4,373 cases. A lot more cases uh, have been put on the board over the last few days, uh, and that's been alarming. Here in the village, we've uh, we've seen that uptick. Uh, we are now at five cases, uh, so that's more than we we've, we've been for a while. Uh, we were usually we usually were around two or three cases, and we've gone as high as six cases. So that's alarming. Uh, it's alarming for us. It's alarming for the county. It's alarming for the state which is why Governor DeWine has issued a curfew order. And that curfew goes into effect tomorrow night starting at 10 p.m. And that goes from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Uh, uh, Sean, do you have that graphic that you can put up? Thank you. So the, the curfew is t uh, statewide. That's beginning Thursday, November 19th. That's tomorrow. And it will be in effect for 21 days. Now, what does that mean for everyone? There are a few exceptions. Uh, if you're going to and from work during those hours, you're exempt. The curfew will not apply to you. The curfew will not apply to you if you are in an emergency and you need to seek medical care. It is also a curfew not intended to stop anyone from getting grocery, food, or medicines at that time. So those are the exceptions. And for, for businesses, businesses are still able, particularly food establishments, they're able to deliver uh, meals uh, uh, after that time. But serving food and drinks in person is explicitly prohibited after 10 p.m. This is a direct uh, action uh, on the data that we're seeing as what are the super spreading sites and super uh, spreading events. And uh, it's a lot of con um, the spreading is happening in bars, restaurants, gyms, hotels, and churches. So that's the governor's uh, hope and expectation that his most recent action is going to have a, an impact to curtail the spreading of the disease in those establishments. Now I'm gonna talk about a bit of a local protocol. As you know, council took strong action on uh, on Monday with a new resolution and adopting a, an updated protocol on the enforcement here in the village. So we're stepping up our enforcement. That's not something new. We've been trying to do more um, with our local residents and the businesses. And so what does that enforcement look like? Well, our, our peace officer will be patrolling downtown area more frequently um, at, on, on an hourly basis. They will be equip, equipped with masks. Uh, we've, we implemented that uh, mask carrying a long time ago, but now you're gonna see that more active uh, and all activity will be logged. When officers encounter an individual not wearing a mask, the provision of that mask that the officer carrying, that's gonna act as a warning. And we hope that that's the extent of our engagement with the residents or with the visitors, whoever that individual may be. Um, but if that, if their compliance uh, does not begin there, then we will move on to the next step, which will be formally issuing citations. Um, those citations, if things go as planned, those citations will be issued to mayor's court. Um, but should we have an, uh, a situation where it escalates, we may end up citing folks into Xenia court. The, um, if, a, if an officer is again experienced an encounter, say within the same, same uh, within an hour that, that, uh, that day, uh, a second citation will be issued. Um, and again, this could go into the, the mayor court, but if it escalates, uh, the offender may be cited into Xenia court. On individuals and businesses, we have distributed new updated signs, and I'm happy to report that the most, if not all uh, at this point, have installed all the signs that we provided. Many of them we did ourselves, our peace officers were out there and they were helping uh, install the new signs. And the new signs, you should be able to see it up here on the screen. Uh, it's very simple and it's very direct. No mask, no service. I don't think we can get any simpler than that message. Uh, so those new signs have been uh, distributed to all the establishments uh, in the downtown area. 
Any business that does not post these uh, signs uh, will be issued written warning and reminded that a second violation will result in a business being closed for 24 hours. Officers will contact the newly formed uh, Workers Comp Bureau Task Force about this offense. And follow up with that establishment will be done within 12 hours. And if the signs are still not posted, a second warning will be issued and the task force will again be contacted. Um, if they do not have the capacity to enforce the 24 hour business shutdown, we or through our police department will do so. Uh, reported businesses and vendors not uh, requiring employees or customers to wear masks will be responded to immediately. Uh, so this is the, the protocol. Uh, council made a, made, sent a strong signal that we must do more and we must um, find better ways to curtail the spreading of the, the disease. All right, that's on curfew and protocol. I've got a few administrative announcements. We have released a grant opportunity for small businesses and nonprofits here in the village. Um, we have set aside $40,000 for environmental condition improvement grants. Uh, this includes the uh, upgrading of furnaces or air filtration systems in an establishment. It can also be used to do other improvements to a space that would improve the environmental conditions, partitions, and a few other things that will fall under that. So we released this uh, program. You may find additional information on our website and on our social media pages. If you have any questions, please do not con do not hesitate uh, to contact me. Uh, the grants are up to five thousand dollars. All right, I'm also happy to announce that our sugar and flour distributions uh, has been announced. We will be distributing the flour and sugar uh, beginning next Monday, that's November the 23rd, and we'll continue through the November the 25th. And finally, I'm sorry, back to the flour and sugar. We, if you have someone on the list or someone new that's moved in or um, life circumstances, um, if you want to add someone to the list, list please uh, contact Raven, uh, and you may find our email on the announcement that we released on the the flower and distribution, or you may call my office, and um, we will add uh, the individuals to the list. And finally, I'm happy to announce that Florence, and who's on, and maybe Florence, you may want to jump in on this, but Florence has secured additional funding for rental assistance and utility payments. Uh, you may have heard me a couple weeks ago uh, thank Florence for the wonderful work she did to secure money and get that money out the door uh, to help people who need that financial resource right now. So she did a great job at getting that money out and now she's at it again she secured an additional fifteen thousand dollars to continue providing support and rental assistance and utilities so florence we can't thank you enough uh, for all that you do and we also thank our partners at the township for making the financial resources available and with that i will now pass the floor to my colleague uh fire chief colin altman chief thank you for joining us Thank you very much, Josue, Miami Township Fire Chief Colin Altman coming to you live from my new office here at the new firehouse. Um, it's not totally set up yet because we just moved in today. Um, but it's pretty close. You know, it's cool. I can actually lock my door. I have my own office. I've got a closet. I have a TV. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I've got a TV. I'm going to watch TV sometimes. Maybe watch some of these things live on YouTube or Facebook or something. And I've got this really cool Johnny Burns inspired, massive curved computer monitor, which isn't in service yet because uh, I need a new video card or something like that. But anyway, we're really excited to be here in our new home. Um, we would love to have you all come and visit. However, unfortunately, uh, there's this pesky COVID thing that still just hasn't gone away. So. Uh, think about us maybe in the, the spring. We'll have a big open house, formal ribbon cutting. Well, actually, hose uncoupling is what you do in a fire station. Uh, so it'd be cool. So, <clears throat> uh, and look, actually, we're, we're thinking about doing a Facebook Live tour of the fire station. So apparently that's a thing that these kids do nowadays. So um, we'll, we'll keep you posted about that one. You can see it virtually. So as Josue was saying, uh, numbers. 
they're everywhere. My God, coronavirus is everywhere. Uh, it didn't miraculously disappear right after the election. So, you know, hmm, that's not a surprise. Um, and it's getting worse. And it's getting worse everywhere. And it's no one's, you know, it's not a deliberate thing, but it's getting worse. So it is important that we continue doing everything that we can to contain the spread. As Josue said, we now have a curfew starting tomorrow night. Um, if you go on social media, you will see much debate about why we are doing a curfew. Um, but frankly, the alternative is a total shutdown. And, uh, you know, I think there are some people who are like, oh, yeah, let's shut down. Yay. Um, I would say small business owners and restaurant owners are probably not among that group. So if we want to avoid that, we have to keep doing the right thing. That means, as always, wear your mask, wear your mask correctly. I can't tell you how many of you people, you people, that sounds so terrible, doesn't it? How many people I see not wearing their mask correctly? And yes, some of you are Yellow Springs residents. So uh, please remember, cover your nose, down under the chin, should be snug fitting. Um, cover your coughs and sneezes, wash and sanitize your hands. No excuse downtown. There is a literally a hand sanitizer station, I think every eight feet, courtesy of the Village of Yellow Springs. Um, so social distance, physical distance, whichever term you like, just do it. Uh, and this means everybody who is kind of laxing into our Yellow Springs behaviors of, oh, I haven't seen you in 12 minutes. I'm going to give you a five minute hug because we're both wearing masks. And you just violated the social distancing thing. So let's keep doing the right thing. Part of this is unfortunately the holidays coming, not that uh, they're unfortunate, but you know, we like to travel. We like to have everyone over a big party. This is really what the generator of the spread is right now. We can blame bars, we can blame restaurants, we can blame gyms, um, but there are a couple key areas, churches and other religious places and uh, these family and party type things that we're doing. So we need to really keep it small this year, maybe do Zoom Thanksgiving. How exciting is that? Um, try not to travel. If you do travel, don't go to Pennsylvania. I love the Keystone State. I've got some great friends there. However, their positivity rate now is at 24%, which means if Josue and I hop in the uh, Josue Cruiser and drive to Pittsburgh, by Ohio regulation, when we return from there, we need to quarantine for 14 days. So just avoid it. Don't go. Um, and just keep doing the right thing. We will get through this. Uh, the vaccine is, is out there. It's getting close. Remember, it is not the panacea that everyone hopes it will be. It's not going to be available tomorrow. Um, widespread availability probably won't be until probably the summer. So we're still going to be doing all this stuff for a while. So keep it up wear your mask, social distance, wash those hands, and stay home if you don't need to go out. Just stay home. Stay home. We did it before. People talk about the sacrifice. Oh, the sacrifice. I have to stay at home. My child is here. My child doesn't get to experience the joys of school. Frankly, who had the joys of school? But remember, a lot of other people, a lot of other generations have sacrificed a heck of a lot more than us having to wear a mask. So... That's it. That's for me from here at our beautiful new fire station. Um, watch for our Facebook live tour um, and maybe some other social media platform, but I don't really know what those are. So maybe I'll talk to Philip about that. But um, if there's nothing else, back to you, Hostway. Chief, thank you. I think it's a, an amazing place you have over there. Thank you for the tour on uh, Halloween. It was oh. physical distance. Yes, you're very welcome. Yeah. Um, all right, now also joining us tonight is uh, Police Chief Carlson. Chief? Thanks, Osue. Thanks, Chief. Um, I was over at the fire station this morning with, with Chief, and uh, it is a magnificent facility. I know how excited everyone is that it will be opening. Um, they've also been gracious enough to share the workout facility with the, the YSPD. We're very grateful for that. Um, no big announcements tonight. I do have one uh, message to let everyone know. The mask on signs, the according to the governor's order, they can vary in how they look. So they don't all have to be the same. This is the one, uh, the other one that we delivered. Sorry, I'm on my phone. So those should be placed in each window. Um, also, if you see anything uncomfortable, uh, contact the police department, don't engage yourself. 
and um, we're here to answer any questions that anyone has or any suggestions as well. I uh, did work with the Spirited Goat coffee shop this morning in some length and the baristas there were gracious enough to uh, help me with the, the signage placement and the removal of some of the furniture that has gathered there. Um, if any of that furniture belongs to you, um, it is in our police department property garage. We'll keep everything there we have for 30 days um, and we're, we'll be more than happy to, to help uh, bring it back to your home. And I also worked and spoke with Current Cuisine and the Emporium today because they too had tables and chairs that needed to be removed. Uh, they were both very gracious and accepting of an understanding of what we're going through. So um, we're hoping that we can keep this kind of progressive uh, path moving forward without uh, any hiccups. Thanks, Osue, back to you. Thank you, Chief. Also joining us is Mayor Pam. Mayor Pam, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, it is my pleasure. And I wanna give a special shout out to Chief Carlson for all the work that you and your officers are doing. I know it's been a long, hard road for you and the, the crew there. You know, we started in March with the reminder that kindness is what we need. We had a lot of red hearts on blue, masks around town and on our signs. And after a while, that just wasn't quite doing it. So then, then we went to our resolution passed by the council. The resolution put some teeth behind what the community was looking for, but still, it wasn't quite the, the power that we needed. A lot of folks weren't getting it as much as most of the community was, so the decision was made to create an ordinance. An ordinance is a law. An ordinance is a, st a statutory law. Now, we heard from Josue at the beginning of the show Josue being our, for the purposes tonight, our chief executive here in the village, our executive branch of government. Next up is going to be Brian Hausch. And Brian is our, of course, our legislative liaison this evening. And he'll, he'll be talking about that. Go back to your eighth grade civics classes, government classes, the executive carries out the law, the legislator passes the law, and the judicial branch judges the law. And that is where mayor's court comes in. And in the very unique case of Yellow Springs, that is where the mayor comes in. So the mayor is charged with doing primarily two things, the ceremonial aspects of the village. And man, I can't wait, Colin, until you have that ribbon cutting. And I'm sure you're going to need a proclamation and uh, all the pomp and circumstance that goes with that coupling. Is that the word you said, coupling? Uh, it's actually an uncoupling of hosts. It's kind of like a, a ribbon cutting, but you uncouple the host. You uncouple. Okay, got it. So we'll we'll look forward to that. But nonetheless, um, for judicial branch, I wanted to say a word on that because I want to explain what's going to happen when following the three-page ordinance that resulted from our legislative efforts here following the kindness and the resolution. You know, our ordinance is actually very simple. It's six sections on two and a half sheets of paper. Section one basically says that within the business district, everyone will maintain six feet of distance and wear a mask and or. So the distancing is important, but as we know, this, this was written in July and we know the importance of the physical barrier, both on the speaker and on the listener. I'm not gonna regale you with the science. You know, folks watching this town hall, I've, I sometimes feel like we're preaching to the choir. And I know that you're aware of much of this already, but I, I digress. Let me get back to describing your ordinance. You will wear a mask, that's section one. Wear a mask, watch your distancing, keep your hands clean. Section two is a series of definitions. We define what we mean by facial coverings, what's a pandemic, what's a public place, and what is social distancing. 
Section three goes on to give a list of nine exemptions, everything from um, a person's age, if you have a medical condition, if you're playing sports, if you're trying to drink something, uh, that, that sort of thing. You are momentarily exempt. Then we get into section four, which is in the enforcement section five being the penalty. And I thought that might be something of interest to those of you listening tonight. So we've got enforcement in place. We have witnesses or we have police officers. Our peace officers are seeing a violation of the mask ordinance. So they will give at first, we're aware, there will be a verbal written warning in lieu of a citation first time, and then they'll be offered a mask and told to mask up. On a subsequent time, if there is a second warning, this is when we're starting to get citations into mayor's court. Now, once a person comes to mayor's court, what happens? Well, a person who violates this section of the ordinance will, and they come to mayor's court, they can be subject to a fine of up to $30. They also will be subject to court costs, which are $80. When somebody comes to the mayor's court in the village of Yellow Springs, we have set fees that we have to pay, regardless of whether the person's case is dismissed or if the fine is reduced or whatever. We still have costs we have to pay to the state of Ohio. Uh, to maintain our court and all the services that are provided. So we'll have fines of up to $30 and then $80 court costs. That ain't chump change. So I just want to caution everyone so that you're aware that the citation into mayor's court can lead to these fines. It's not something we enjoy doing, but I might suggest it would be easier to put on the mask, put on the facial covering, follow the science. That's what we do in Yellow Springs. We follow the science to lower the risk to ourselves and to our community. Now, you know, we've been saying some version of this since March within our community. And whenever I hear that word community, it makes me think of Arthur Morgan one of my favorite people to talk about here. I, I do believe that Arthur Morgan said it best when he said, I've been making a collection of Arthur Morgan quotes lately, because I think he has a lot to say to our village. In 1944, he published an article called Tolerance versus Compromise in a little magazine called Community Life, which was part of his organization that he founded in 1940 called Community Service. Today, that's known as uh, community, uh, the Community Morgan Institute for Community Solutions. They do a lot, of course, with Agraria. But nonetheless, Arthur Morgan said, a good community spirit depends very much on the general habit of the citizens of holding strongly to their ideals and standards, but holding them tentatively and with humility and with understanding and goodwill for those who have strikingly different standards. And I go back to what Josue, I believe, said at the start of this, this evening tonight together. We look at, you know, the village has different factions of people who look at things differently. They have strikingly different standards. But I will say the citizens of Yellow Springs, the folks who watch this broadcast, the folks who follow council, the folks who turn in petitions, the demand was there for a mask ordinance. On July 8th, 2020, Village Council unanimously passed a mask ordinance. It became law, it became statutory law. And in the United States, we follow our laws, but we do so with, in the words of Morgan, understanding and goodwill for those who have strikingly different standards. And we've tried for a long time to honor those standards, to work with different groups of people. Something, some think it's 
too severe. Some things think it's not severe enough. Some think, some most think we just have to follow the science. And that is what we are trying to do in your village leadership team. Follow the science for yourself and for others. That's what we're after. You know, these draconian measures will be over at some point soon. Let's look at what Colin said, vaccines coming in late spring or summer. But as we all know, this group has been reading about those, listening, I'm sure. Two shots necessary, refrigeration issues, so forth and so on with um, the first line of defense workers going first and the elderly and eventually it'll filter down to the general population. But that's gonna take a while. Follow the science, do what you can to keep yourself and others safe and mask up. Thank you, thank you for watching and thank you for being here tonight. Josue, back to you. Thank you, Mayor. And now we'll hear from Brian Hausch, Council President. Brian, thank you for joining us. Where we're at. Brian, Brian, I'm sorry, I think we're losing your signal. Sean, are you able to get the signal? We're uh, we're we're losing you a bit. Do you mind if uh, I've got your your statement? Would you like me to read it? Sure. All right. Uh, thank you, Brian, for sharing that. Um, all right. I I see you got a a, a communication from Sean from Springfield, and. Um, and I think this is a message that resonates well with some of the some of the feedback that I've gotten from individuals that they've been incredibly impressed with what we're done in the community, and that is um, educating folks, providing as much information up front, mm -hmm. helping shame the behavior in the in the community. So thank you, Sean, for reaching out to to Brian because I think the um, your message is on point that. Part of our education campaign or marketing campaign has been to change the behavior and, and embrace this behavior of, of taking all the pre uh, precautionary, taking all the preventative measures, uh, physical distancing and uh, wearing the mask and hand washing. And that's what's leading the, to, to us being successful as a, as a community. So I will read uh, Sean's message, it says, you, you all train me well. I don't go anywhere without my mask. I get strange looks in Springfield. Well, hey, so far, three COVID-19 uh, tests and, oh, I lost my signal here. Uh-oh, I lost my computer. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. We're back. We're back. All right. So I'm sorry. We we've got we're having technical issues here. All right. So Sean's had three uh, uh, three negative results. And yes, I'm washing my hands. Yes, I'm trying to stay six feet from unmasked folks. So hey, Yellow Spring saved my life just by the mask mandate you already had when it all of this started. Um, this, now, this is the message from, from Brian. Uh, I feel I propose to share the core village team values adopted several years ago. That's Coroco, which means heart of the sea, so, so that we all understand how our team members operate. I believe we all need to go beyond the I told you so, and it's about time attitudes, and try to be constructive, collaborative, and empathetic. Um, I'm suggesting that instead of posting that critical and negative statements, you instead share an encouraging positive statement. Even better, a kind note. These, uh, these folks are, are people are putting service above self and they serve to be thanked and honored. We need to recognize that privilege so that many of us have in this village as we sit in our comfortable homes with many nice things around us and appreciate the hard work and incredible challenges uh, for our frontline workers, which include our peace officers and other village team members. What good might happen if we all tried a few weeks to be kind to others and be kind? Doesn't mean that we don't remind our fellow community members about the need to follow the safety uh, protocols. 
I recently learned that our peace officers were visiting local businesses in the past few days and providing no masks and no service signs to help our local economy open. All right, that's I think that's as far as I can I can read, Brian. So let me let me see if I'm able to um, to follow up on your message. I don't think I have it um, follow, but. Thank you, Brian, for the for the message. It does. I, I appreciate the um, the kind words. Um, thanking our frontline uh, staff, that's our, our peace officers, the sacrifices that the fire department has made. I know it's been a, a particularly challenged time for our colleagues at the fire department uh, with fire chief. Um, chief has had several several staff members that have had to quarantine and others that have been sick and we're we're i'm grateful uh that many of those uh employees have been able to make it through uh the the disease um with mo with moderate symptoms and uh, that they're going to be okay so i know that it is affecting us on a day-to-day -day. so i appreciate uh brian what you've done and what you continue to what you'll continue to do for us in our community um, and also to the to the nurses, so many frontline workers out there, you are in the front line. So I thank you for all that you're doing. Um, I, I think us here, when the and in the executive office, as Mayor Pam uh, gave us a good uh, a good uh, uh, overview on how we as a government are meant to work. We here in the executive office and in my office, we we try to execute the the vision and the goals of the legislation, the council. And um, this is what Governor DeWine is also trying to do here with the curfew is uh, execute his executive power to, to in the interest of all our, our communities in Ohio. All right, I think I did as best as I could to cover that message. Um, we will now open up for questions. Uh, Philip, do we have questions? Yeah. All right. Are we going to move to questions? Colin, I think this first one's for you. Uh, from uh, Minerva Baker for Colin, are you testing your crews when they have sec had secondary exposure, given that spread is out of control and contract tracing is a mess? I came in late, so I'm not clear on your testing protocol <laughs> or if you mentioned them. Well, we are now... Um... <clears throat> I mean, after our, you know, we peaked at 30% of our workforce was either in quarantine or isolation. Um, so that was quite stressful. I'm happy to say that uh, all but one actually are back back to work, full duty at this point. So that's wonderful. We're very excited by that. Um, we are, <clears throat> we were all set to begin a regular PCR testing um, program. Uh, but the person we were working with on that, uh, unfortunately tested positive herself. So hopefully when she returns, we can continue that. But in the interim, we're doing rapid testing on our staff um, uh, on a weekly basis on uh, random members uh, to make sure that, it, that we're good. So I just, I just tested yesterday and uh, I'm happy to report that I got a negative COVID test. So that's, that's good. Um, our crews continue. I mean, they're all wearing masks here in the station when they can't social distance. Um, and uh, and we protect ourselves in every call within 95 masks, gloves, safety glasses, and as needed, face shields and uh, isolation gowns. So um, hopefully uh, we'll be able to ramp up that testing program. We do have one nurse on staff who can do sample collection. Um, <clears throat> we're looking at uh, working on that uh, to uh, to increase our testing numbers and uh, see what, what comes of it. There you go, back to you. And I, I know that the Mene Rebecca didn't ask about the rest of the, us in our protocol, but I think it's important that we share because we all have a role in making sure that our, our teams are safe, uh, not only in their workplace, but as they're encountering uh, others in the community. So you, uh, you may recall that a few, I guess I wanna say maybe two months ago, we had, a, we had a, one of our employees contract the coronavirus and several of us had to quarantine. Um, since then, we haven't had any any employees uh, test positive or become ill um, as a result of uh, being infected with coronavirus. But 
we do have a, a very strict protocol that if we have a suspicion that anyone that has been sick and that suspicion it usually comes from the employee themselves they've been around someone that's been sick or they um uh, they thought that somebody might have been sick well, if we become aware of that, we immediately uh, ask the individuals to stay home, so to self-quarantine, get a test as soon as possible. Uh, as soon as possible, many individuals have gotten the, the test uh, that same day, and they have to wait three to five days, like everyone else, to get a test. Um, and if they're test negative and they they meet the other eligibility return to work, they return to work. If uh, there was uh, an, a close uh, contact, uh, an exposure to COVID, then they would uh, they would qu uh, quarantine for the whole 14 days. Uh, so we're following the protocol as strict as possible uh, to ensure the safety of our personnel here in the building and among the public works crews and the peace department, um, but also to uh, safeguard our community. We do not want to put uh, team members out on the field that might be carriers or or, or might uh, be sick out in the field. So we're also being sensitive to that. All right, we have another question from Eric Clark. Um, question is, do the businesses have to display that specific mass sign or just any? Well, we have endorsed two mass signs, and those are the two that we have distributed. One that um, Chief Carlson put up on the screen, which is the one that was provided by the state, and then the one that our local team designed, which is the no mask, no service, and that was designed here locally by our our uh, marketing team. And I'll say our marketing team because it is the villages. It it uh, we we have a collaborative team that's working on messages on uh, messaging, um, and that's been in place since early March. And um, this is what DJ and the chamber um, came up with, and I think it's direct, it's to the point, it gets the message across in no uncertain terms. Okay, um, another question from Minerva Baker. Is there any plan to offer face shields to those who claim exceptions? Uh, no, we do not have face shields in, in stock and in inventory. We have um, masks and that's uh, what our protocol calls for. Um, I was involved in a, I had a conversation with several, uh, with well, one, one particular um, resident who is a frontline worker, who is in a, a healthcare worker, and who went through, um, we we're having a conversation about medical exemptions, and there are very few, um, and the mask works uh, so I, I won't get into the details of that, but you know there there are few medical exemptions. And you know, bottom line, we on the face shields. It is an inventory issue. It is a a a, a resource issue. Uh, so we'll continue to make the resources that we have available, which is a, a mask and not a face shield. All right. I see a follow up question from Eric Clark, and this is for uh, for Chief Carlson or Chief Altman. Are people who say I have a medical exemption still exempt from wearing the mask uh, mandate? First way I can help with that one. Um, they are still exempt, however, not to enter an establishment. So um, what we and what the governor's order. Uh, provides is alternative service. So we can help that person in any way, acquire what goods or services they're there for. They can set up a call in um, and then it can be brought out curbside and the police department will assist in any way to help uh, any individual acquire what they are looking for. Thank you, Chief. All right, Philip, do we have any more questions? Okay, I see two folks have joined us, or three have joined us here on Zoom. Are there any questions from you? Okay. All right, with that, I wanna, I wanna thank you for joining us for another virtual town hall. Remember, we're here to help. Uh, so if there's anything that we can do here within our, within our uh, various organizations, that's the, the village administrations, the mayor's office, council, and the fire department, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. And with that, I wanna wish you a good night. Stay strong, stay safe.